In this video, we'll be going over the Azure DevOps user story integration and then the Azure DevOps Git integration. Um, to save some time, I will be jumping around a little bit. So if you have any questions after this, um, please reach out to the AE or me and we can dive deeper into this, how I got here and what the steps would be. Um, but first, I'll review the Azure DevOps user story integration. So this is a bi-directional sync. Um, so I do have an existing branch here. So if I click on that branch, and if I want to tie an existing user story, meaning that this user story already exists in your Azure DevOps instance to a branch, we can click on that tab, uh, Azure DevOps here, and we can search for that requirement. So I'll search for it, and you can search for keywords in that summary field. This is gonna be your org, this is gonna be your project. So within Flowsome, you can limit what project uh, requirements are populated within Flowsome. So here I'll search for keywords in that description or summary field. And we can use updates to the Apex class, trigger, and layout. Once you link this to the object, um, one thing to note here, or sorry, once you link this to the branch, all of these fields, they are configurable. So a good example here, maybe some teams don't necessarily care about the work item reason. If you wanted to, you could remove this field and add your own custom field. Additionally, um, the status fields can be mapped. So maybe you deploy this to QA, this could automatically update to say testing, for example, and that'd be reflected in Azure DevOps in real time. You deploy it to prod, it could say ticket closed. So that is up to the customer and all this is configurable as well. Now the bi-directional sync. Let's just say I assign one of my peers a pull request. Maybe they find a bug in that Apex class. Rather than going into Azure DevOps and creating that bug, you could create it right within Flowsome. So if I create a Azure story, I wanna select my org, and my project. And then I just have two fields populated here just um, to keep it simple. So I can do JSON test 830 and we'll leave it as to do. Once you save that, it will be um, submitted to your branch. And then if we go into Azure DevOps, refresh this page, we should see that ticket there. There's the JSON test 830. So it's a true bi-directional sync in real time. The next tool I want to review is going to be the impact analysis. Um, so ideally, after you tie your user story to it and commit, <coughs> and commit your components to the branch, the next order of business is to really run your impact analysis. And this is going to catch anything that's a risk of an overwrite, whether it be an automated or manual change. Ideally within Flowsome, this is meant to take place within Flowsome because this really enables Flowsome's native version control and native repository. And I'll show you just how powerful that is. So if I click on this impact analysis, I'll just do uh, one conflict as a great example here. So I wanna take this to integrated dev and down below here, there's seven conflicts. I'll use this custom field as a good example. And if I click different, a pop-up appears. On the left-hand side is gonna be your source file, which is the file in your branch. And on the right-hand side is gonna be your target org. The reason Flowsome always compares against your target org is because if you have admins or developers making changes in that org, a lot of times that will not be reflected in your repository. The, repos the merge conflict in a Git solution probably won't even pick up that manual change. Flowsome can always detect those. So with 31 differences here, if I scroll down a little bit, green, these fields will mean they're net new. So they don't yet exist in the target org and there's really no risk of an overwrite. Scroll down a bit further, and we know red means that this is definitely at risk of an overwrite. These don't even exist in the source file. What Flowsum does on the back end for users <clears throat> is we'll rearrange this file, giving you a true semantic comparison, meaning that even though there's these white spaces here, Flowsum knows to give a true value to value match, Kentucky to Kentucky. What you're going to see in a lot of other Git repositories is this value is going to bump up to 71 or 73, 74, uh, 75, and 76. So now Kentucky is being compared to Kansas. Like that would not be right. And what you're gonna see is an entire file of just red lines, false conflicts. What does this look like? I have a good example in a GitHub repository, but with an Azure DevOps, it's going to be the same thing. Here you can see Georgia is on line 210 in the source, but it's also on line 185 in the target. Like, is that really a conflict or does Git have a really hard time understanding XML? So this is where Flowsome's native version control really enhances Git. It eliminates that need for false conflicts. And using this screen here, this is where devs and admins are going to spend a significant amount of time, just trying to decipher what's a true conflict 
what they want and what they don't need. Great example, Canada, again, is being compared to India. Like that isn't right when Canada is down here. The argument I always get a lot is big deal. This is just a pick list value. We can work around it. But how many Salesforce components are in XML format? Um, I would probably say 95 to 97%. So using Flowsome, we have custom logic built in for every single component where you're never going to have those false conflicts. And it's crystal clear exactly what those changes are. Um, so I knew that was a really high level overview, but now we're going to switch gears and talk about the bi-directional sync to the Azure um, Git repo. So switching back to Flowsome here, all actions you take in Flowsome <coughs> would be reflected in your Git instance in real time. And I'll show you a great example here. So I'll create a new branch and I can name this 830 or 930 JSON test branch. I'll sign this to repository with my Azure repo and we can save it. So on the back end, this branch was created in Flowsome and that would also be reflecting your Azure DevOps instance in real time. What I do want to show though is actually committing some components to that branch where we can also see an ADO. So I'll go to Dev1 here and just pull in a recent snapshot I created and just commit it to that branch. I'll pick that repository and the branch I just created was the 930 JSON. Here I'll just, and we'll just select all of them. Continue commit to branch. This screen here, since that branch was created, it's they're all safe to commit. Zero risk of an overwrite. So I'll move forward with the commit. So now that these are reflected in Flowsome, I'll switch to Azure DevOps where we can see that in the repository. So my Azure demo, let's go to the repo. Here's my 930 JSON test branch. And here you can see, here's all the components that I just recently submitted to the repository or committed to the repository. So whether you're merging branches, committing, resolving conflicts, all of that is meant to be taken within Flowsome, but it would be reflected in your Azure DevOps instance in real time. And then the question is, well, why use Flowsome? Um, the main reason is this. What you see here, Flowsome just really enhances that Git instance and really makes your life easier, faster deployments, and higher code releases.